This is Red Pub Pod. Red Pub Pod. Red Pub Pod. Red Pub Pod. A podcast Red Pub Pod. from Red Hot Publications. Red Pub, Red Pub Pod. Red Pub Pod. Good afternoon, good morning, good night, good wherever you are out in the podcasting world. This is Robert Knipe from Red Hawk Publications. The Red Pub Pod is on. I am here today with uh, um, my engineer and uh, par excellence conductor, Richard Eller. Also here with me is local poet and uh, all-around smart aleck, Tim Peeler. And today we are talking to a, uh, a Red Hawk Publications poet, a gentleman named Mike James out of Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Um, I want to tell uh, a little bit about Mike here uh, f- from one of his books, if I can find the author stuff out of here. Here we go. Uh, Mike James makes his home outside Nashville. His poetry is widely published in magazines, large and small. He has read and performed his work at universities and performance venues throughout the country. His many poetry collections include Portable Light from Red Hawk Publications, Leftover Distances from Lucador, Jumping Drawbridges in Technicolor from Blue Horse Publications, and Crows in the Jukebox by Bottom Dog. Welcome, Mike James. Say hi to the Red Hawk Publications Red Pub Pod audience. Uh, well, I'm so happy to be here, and hello to everybody who's listening. So today we're going to talk about Mike's new book called Back Alley Saints at the Tiki Bar. It is available as we speak. In fact, Mike, uh, as of this broadcast, you should be getting your copies in sometime today so you can take them on the road and sell them. It's a, oh. <laughs> it's a really <laughs> nice, yeah, they ought to be in sometime today. Uh, now, if you're listening to this pub, podcast two weeks from now, they're already out. You can find them on Amazon.com or you can find them on HTTPS RedHawkPublications.com. That's the best place to, uh, to pick things up, uh, to where our uh Artists make the most royalties, and your money goes the farthest. And in fact, right now, if you use the code SPRING23, SPRING23, you can save 20% on Red Hawk Publications. So, Mike, Back Alley Saints at the Tiki Bar, what are we looking at here? Are we looking at an original work? Are we looking at a selected poems? What kind of book is Tiki Bar? So, um, I'll tell you, I have been working on this book uh, off and on for about six years, six, maybe seven years. Um, I published a lot of books while working on this, but, you know, this has really been the, uh, something which has been this project that I've had in the back of my mind for a long time that, um, uh, I've been very, very happy with, uh, the, you know, the, the, the support that I've gotten from, from Red Hawk and from so many other publishers, I've been happy with the the other books, but this has really been a very special project for me. Um, You know, it's, uh, it's, it's a book that um, I really felt that I I was bringing everything that I had ever learned about poetry to, and and that I was really trying to do everything that I I know how to do Uh, and addressing issues that, uh, that, I was always very interested in, which is, uh, you know, the uh, a lot of iconography in, in popular culture uh, and, and how we relate to that, uh, a lot of things in terms of, of uh, how we explore different selves and, notion, and uh, notions of, of gender and, and uh, uh, fluidity, uh, and, uh, and, and going back into uh, childhood and, and also... Um, you know, notions of, uh, of mortality that, uh, you know, the, the childhood is where we start. And, and as Hemingway correctly noted, all stories have continued far enough end in death. So it, it really is a big book in my mind in, in every way. Uh, I think, um, you know, I'm very, I'm very thankful for Portable Life, which is, you know, in, in many ways, my life's work because it, it encompasses the work that I published for 30 years and, and, uh, and I, I'm so thankful for all that. But in terms of an individual collection, which is not 
selected in any way, which is all original work, I really feel that Back Alley Saints is my best book and the book that I was born to write. So that's a long answer to a short question, but I am very Southern, and that's what we do. <laughs> oh, that's a that's an excellent answer. Um, it differentiates the two products, Portable Light, which we were very proud to publish um, a year, year and a half ago, something like that. Mm-hmm. It's, it's one of our yep. COVID books because it's one of the books that yep. we worked on during our lockdown. And yep. it is um, selected poems. There's some new poems in there, but it's uh, selected poems from 1991 to 2021. So yep. truthfully, there are 30 years worth of poems in the book. But Back yep. Alley Saints, like you said, is a is a new, all new poems in this book. Uh, yep. And some very interesting poems as well. Um, I noticed that like in the first part of the book, you've got this sectioned off and the sections really don't have titles, but they've got um, um, epigrams, epigraphs. And yep. the very first one has an epigraph from Allen Gin- Ginsberg that says, the moon in the dewdrop is the real moon. And then each one of these poems in here, are they, the titles start with the word saint. We've got Saint yep. Candy Darling. We've got Saint James Broughton, Saint Jane Mansfield, which, you know, really caught my eye because I've always been a Jane Mansfield uh, fan growing up. Uh, Saint Absolutely. Tennessee Williams in New Orleans. Tennessee Williams, another one of my favorite artists, uh, not only a great uh, playwright, but a great poet and a great writer of short stories as well, and just a great personality, Yep, Tennessee Williams. What's the reason for this, this naming and these, these design of these poems in this section? Um, so I, uh, I've always been, been very interested in... Um, those who operate at the margins. Um, and, you know, I think, I think that the best writing and the best art is, you know, what, what Arnold called that criticism of life. And, and uh, I think you really get that the most from those who are outside of the mainstream. And I think uh, too often, you know, we, uh, we try to do a very hard line differentiation between the, the high and the low. Um, and while I'm appreciative of that, um, I think that the, the the mind and the imagination operate in, uh, best in a buffet style, and uh, um, you know I I, I, the, I fell in love with this uh, this idea from the the, the um, filmmaker Jack Smith many years ago, where he talks about personal masterpieces, which are maybe movies or, or books that you fall in love with, and which mean everything to you, but which you know you know are not. Uh, Citizen Kane or, you know, are not the sun also rises, but that they really strike such a personal chord with you. And all the people that, uh, that, that I reference in, uh, uh, in this book are my, uh, my pantheon of secular saints. They're, they're people who have uh, always been a benchmark for me. I, I, I say that Candy Darling is, uh, uh, is my spirit, uh, my, my, my spirit animal, uh, which, you know, we normally refer to as animals, and I say that about the crows as well, but uh, she, she is sort of the, the, one of the patron saints of, uh, of my life. So, uh, and again, someone who uh, uh, is maybe as recognized as she should be, but who is a, a key part of, uh, of those that I look at in, uh, uh, in creating art and then uh, how I, uh, I approach a poem and, uh, and the imagination. And folks, this this book is worth the price of admission just for this section. These poems are uh, the the sainthood that uh, Mike you 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 bestow on these characters is fully fascinating. And the things that you write about these people in these poems is equally fascinating. You you mentioned Candy Darling. There's a line in here where it says that you know Candy's drag friend Jackie loved Candy, the comic strip Nancy. And vanilla ice cream. What struck me was the comic strip Nancy, because in growing up, that comic strip. For those of you who are old enough to remember Nancy, and Nancy still is is published in the paper, but mm-hmm. sparingly, and also by another artist. But that artist has decided to retain that kind of oddness that Nancy, mm-hmm. <laughs> the comic strip, mm-hmm. always had. Kind of like the comic strip Henry when I was mm-hmm. growing up too, which was a textless comic strip about a little boy that apparently didn't even have a mouth. But 
the things you write about Mansfield and the things that you write about, uh, you got Freddie Mercury in here, um, St. Divine of Baltimore and thereabouts. I mean, just fascinating, well done poetry that resonates with me and would resonate with anyone else who is um, uh, interested in these personal masterpieces. I mean, people who love Russ Meyer movies and things like that, that, you know, when some of my, my, my Citizen Kane movies are like Russ Meyer films that other people mm-hmm. go, God, that's horrible. Why would you think yeah. that was a great film? And you actually look at it and say, this is a masterpiece because this, is, this guy is just slightly off enough to make mm-hmm. all of this stuff fascinating. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm, I might add here, I think a lot of people now, younger people in particular, wouldn't even know who Candy Darling was, mm-hmm. you know, with Lou Reed gone, with Andy Warhol gone, with that whole scene being something so far in the past, you know, you might even need to explain who that is or who that was. Yeah, you know, it, it's funny. I was, uh, I was raised by my grandparents until I was 11, and... Uh, uh, or at least li- li- live with them uh, until I was 11. And uh, so my frame of reference is is a little bit older than uh, my 52 years. Uh, and my wife actually pointed out to me, she said, you know, most people your age do, do not reference uh, Steve McQueen and Liberace. And, uh, and I have told her, this is not the fault of either Steve McQueen or Liberace. It is the fault of culture. Uh, so uh, I, I do not make uh, make any excuses for for my references. Uh, so that they are not uh, they are not quite as obscure as Ezra Pound's, but but they are my own. <laughs> no, and, and, I'll say that. And see, there this this new generation has its own Steve McQueen. Oh, sure. The filmmaker yep. Steve McQueen that you know yep. makes the videos and the films that are the jump cut films. But we recently here in Hickory, North Carolina, where we are based, uh, had a Andy Warhol kind of visiting uh, art piece that came to our local Hickory Museum of Art, and it was well attended by people of a younger age who actually Mm -hmm. were familiar and are familiar with Andy Warhol. Yeah, there's a guy in LaGrange, Georgia, that owns most of the Andy Warhol uh, art that's out there, and he was the one that brought it up here. And see, these younger people can learn about candy through, you know, if they can get one toehold on one of the people, they can then climb that mountain to to learn the other ones. And then it takes us old dudes to get out there and show these people these films and and these uh, the who these people are. I mean, when I used to be able to teach American Lit at this college, I was constantly teaching Tennessee Williams, you know, and showing mm-hmm. them Tennessee Williams plays and teaching them about Tennessee Williams because he was such a fascinating mm-hmm. character. Tim, do you have some questions yeah. that you'd like well, to... Well, I just wanted to make a couple comments. One thing that I've always been impressed with about Mike is the wide swath that he cuts with his own personal reading. And oh, I, yeah. I just have this one little statement here that I want you to respond to. Being a poet means being a lifelong learner, a constant reader. What, what would you say about that? Because you obviously are. Yeah, you know, it, it, it's funny, um, Tim. I uh, I got appointed a poet laureate of Murfreesboro, Tennessee, uh, just the, the other week, and uh, I have a uh, a meeting in a, a, about an hour from now with uh, uh, they're doing a little little video interview with me, and. Uh, it's funny that there's been a lot of conversation in terms of what, what are you doing to get people to, to write more? But my, my pushback that I've, uh, that I'm offering uh, uh, is I'm not really trying to get people to write more, but I, I do want people to read more, you know, because, uh, you know, Saul Bellow said the writer is just a reader moved to emulate. And, and I, I'll tell you, Tim, we're, you know, we're both Carolina boys. Um, one of, the, uh, the the best things that I could say happened to me as, as a teenager was I was able to, to meet James Dickey, who hmm. said, you know, you have to read everything and you have to read all the time and you have to know everything. And uh, I, I was so impressed by Dickey. And, and you know, he, he continues to be one of my, my Desert Island poets, and I, I expect him to always be there. But 
um, I can't I can't imagine um, not having the, the joy of reading and 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 finding all the different things that that I don't know. You know, I I, I wish that I had a hundred lifetimes to explore all the things that I'm interested in. If if I get any irritation with my reading, it is just the fact that I don't have enough time and uh, you know m- make some allowances for that, or and that that I don't read at the uh, at the rate that I would like to read. So, uh, you know, th- those are small complaints, but uh, uh, I'm, I'm always so thankful for, for the first library card that I got for uh, the tutor that uh, that taught me to read. I didn't learn how to read till I was nine. Um, I was one of the kids that had fallen through the cracks. And uh, thankfully, my, my mother got me a tutor, and uh, I then had a very good third-grade teacher. And... Uh, um, I think part of me is always kind of making up for uh, uh, for those stories that that, that uh, I wasn't able to to read to myself. Um, so that so I've never really thought about that, Tim. So I appreciate that appreciate that uh, that question because it, it does kind of lead me in a different direction. Yeah, I want to I want to ask you one other thing, and then we want to give you some time to read some from the book. Uh, okay. But this is my comment when I read your work. Although it's uh, much more accessible than Tim Early's, and I know you're familiar with his work. Oh, oh yeah, it gives Very me much so. it gives me that same feeling of a kind of sublime amusement uh, that I experience when I'm reading Tim's work, and yet, like whenever I'm through, there's a, a lingering feeling even after the humor uh, of an underlying sadness, and. Would you mind commenting on that, or that's do you think true. that's true? I think there, that's even true. though there's a lot of humor in this work, you have that. I mean, there's something tugging at you, like the the end of knowledge is always sadness, just like what you said earlier uh, that Hemingway said ends in death. But do you do you do that intentionally, or is that just one of those things that happens whenever you're in the zone? Yeah, you know, I I, I trust that place that we are always trying to go to when we write, you know, that, that, uh, that well, that, that conjures up the, the images and that, uh, you know, the, the dams that we're always trying to, to break through. Um, I will say, uh, I'm, I'm a very fortunate person in that 98% of the time, uh, I am in an incredibly good mood and that I I love my life and I'm so grateful for it. Um, But I do think that if you, if you look at theater and and you look at the comedy and and the drama, you know, just as I, as I said in in this book, you know, there's childhood, but there's also mortality. And, and I think if we have children and, and we love children, we want them always to be surrounded by love and joy. But when we look at our own life, we know that there's going to be that sadness, that, that things will eventually end, and that uh, the laughter will end. And we will not be able to read all the books we want to read. We will not be able to go on all the trips, uh, try all the different hamburgers, you know, uh, uh, kiss, uh, kiss everybody that we, we want to kiss or, or give all the, the I love you's that we want to give. So uh, I do think that there are, that there, there are two different sides of the river, and uh, I'm always trying to swim back and forth across. <laughs> and that is definitely true about the, the, the poems that are in Back Alley Saints at the Tiki Bar. Absolutely. One, one of my favorites is A Brief History of Distances. It's a really mm. cool poem you've got in here that resonates that kind of feeling. Uh, Mother's Old Purse is another one that if you just hear the title and you're of a certain age, you will realize about what Mother's Old Purse means. Um, you can pick this book up. It is on sale right now for $15 on redhawkpublications.com. If you use the code SPRING23, that's just all one word together, SPRING23, you can save 20%. So, Mike, you got some poems you want to read to us from uh, from Back Alley Saints? Uh, I, I do, I do. Um, I've, I've got got a couple in here. In fact, one of the ones that I, I'd mark to read is actually that St. Jane Mansfield that you okay. referenced. So terrific. Uh, 
So uh, I'll, I'll start with that one. Uh, and again, it's called St. James, uh, St. Jane Mansfield. When you wear lingerie, don't hide in the closet. Go out and get mail. Greet favorite neighbors. Wave at passing cars like tomorrow's princess. There's an appetite for extravagance we all possess. Think pink cathedral. That's worth the day's travel. Think any place where sequins are a must. Spots for glitter are there where we go. Sometimes glitter is homemade. Sometimes we carry our own glitter kit. A quirk, not cultivated, dies quick. There are days when we live best by a whim. Bubble soak instead of shower. Peach pie instead of toast for breakfast. Pedicure and wax instead of tax man. Beauty from a bottle is still a gift. Be blonde on any day you wish. Looking natural might be the hardest act. Even saints live in excess. Um, that's terrific. So that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's one. Um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do one more of my, my, my fight points. And this is... Uh, This is, I think, the Divine of Baltimore and thereabouts. And, and Divine was the, uh, for, for those who aren't aware, was the, the muse of, of the filmmaker and, and writer John Waters. And uh, he was a, uh, a drag queen um, in, in that he, he didn't really appear on stage as a drag queen, but he always appeared as, as a woman in the movies. So, uh, and was uh, uh, a, a very large uh, queen. So, uh, which was, was part of my, uh, his, uh, his and her appeal to me, but the poem's called St. Divine of Baltimore and thereabouts. The heart magic it takes to walk like a man and look beautiful along the way. Quick firecracker reaction love brings. You can't breathe, but want to shout. Swimsuit bodies have swimsuits. At least, that's what the advertisement says. Ice cream is eaten for breakfast, but that's when it's served. Still best in bed. Your best gesture may be to sigh. Sometimes breathe alone, breath, breath alone tells more about our eyes. That sounds silly if your lashes are long. Paint with mascara. Breathe with a point. When you buy a purple wig or long black lashes, they are yours. You didn't grow them, but they are yours. The grocery store apple, not homegrown, still delicious. Any song on the radio might hint at who you are. You play along and hum as you go, every role different. Flossing your teeth might be the best act all day. And I'll, I'll tell a, a, a little aside on this one before, before I read the next one. Um, you know, our, our, our minds work in odd ways, and, and, and I always love contrast. Um, but as I was working on this, um, the line where, where I talk about the, uh, uh, if, if you own a wig that is yours, uh, that, that's actually borrowed from John Wayne. Um, he... Uh, Late in life, he was invited to Harvard uh, to, by the, the student union. This was during the the, uh, the the Vietnam War, and they were going to uh, roast him and challenge him and whatnot. But you know, John Wayne was was very charismatic and very charming, and he charmed the students while he was there. And, and one of the students stood up and challenged him and said, "Hey, you know, you're you're the, this icon, and and you go around and 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 you wear the, uh, this hair, and the hair is not even yours." And he tugged at it, and he said, well, son, it is my hair. I didn't grow it, but I paid for it. So uh, I, I actually, th th that occurred to me while I was working on a poem about a drag queen, and uh, it amused me to, to put the Duke uh, in a poem about a, uh, another actor 
who uh, created a persona, but a very different one with the divine. Um, if, so. I, if, if I can just interject one small thing here concerning divine, if you've never seen any of the films of John Waters, one of the wonderful things about the charismatic divine was the fact that, okay, it is obviously, obviously a man in drag, but the guy was such a terrific and charismatic actor and Waters' material was so well done that you actually forget that this is a man in drag. You do. You absolutely do. He or she becomes whatever character that she is in the film. Mm -hmm. And it was so well done and so wonderful. And I wish in the world that people who have a problem with drag, who have a problem with them reading stories to people and stuff like that, would just look and say, what about the character of this person? What about the personality of this person? And don't pay attention to whether it's a man wearing women's clothes or a woman wearing men's clothes. Just mm -hmm. fall into whatever it is as them as a person and just have fun with it. Just enjoy it because all the performances we got from Divine uh, this gentleman during a very short life are well mm -hmm. worth revisiting on a regular basis because of how wonderful a performer that uh, that uh, Divine was. Uh, absolutely. I, I, will, I will just say amen to that, Robert, 100%. Okay. Sorry about that. I just had to say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 we are, we are com in complete agreement. And, and I've, just got, I've got one one other poem that I'll read, which is the... Uh, which is the, the last poem uh, in the book, and it's called Last Poem. And uh, it, the, the great poet Ted Berrigan sort of invented this form, uh, and he said that we should, we should all write uh, one poem that encapsulated our life uh, in, in, in a way that would make it sort of a sort of uh, joyful elegy. Um, and... Uh, Berrigan wrote many last poems, one of which he, he retained. But uh, this is uh, this is my version of, of that uh, that form. And again, the poem is just called "Last Poem," and it's the last poem in the book. No basketball or tool was ever my friend. My heart was large but slow. Everyone knew when I missed a beat. The things I knew were small and unsubtle, particular as dates in a history book or weather forecasts in an almanac. I was fine with it. Fine also with rain, snow, and sun. I loved all cycles, believed in the calendar as fiercely as a fresh convert. Once, as a boy, I saw Goose Gossage pitch and remembered that swaggering fact each spring. A little older, shook James Dickey's mighty paw, watched my own hand disappear. I went to concerts, heard Clapton, heard Dylan, stayed awake all night each time afterwards, so my mind still hummed electric at morning. Despite it all, I never learned to dance or even walk with anything Arthur Murray would call grace. I drove across many states, lost many maps, asked for directions, told stories, flirted, and further lost my way, ate pickled eggs, hot dogs, bowled peanuts, and fried chicken at gas stations from Maryland to Louisiana. After many stops, made a home at 549 Ruby Oaks Lane, Murfreesboro, Tennessee, 37128. All my life, there were many friends though some left early. My children stuck around, gave more joy than tears by overwhelming percentages. My children were numerous and avowedly profane. Among the many women there are to love, there was only one, which was enough. In love's abundance, I grew large and round, my voice coarsened and my laugh could be heard four rooms over or across the football field. When the end came, it was swift and without gasp or pain. On a late summer night, 
the television on past normal time, a cat jumped in my chair, eager for affection. By then, I was wordless and quietly gone. Let none who loved me well or long think of my end. That was great. Yeah. That's terrific. Thank you. I mean, if if uh, if any poem would be a worthwhile elegy to a, to a poet or a person, that uh, that would be it. Because I identify with so many of those lines in that poem. No sport or tool was ever my friend. <laughs> <laughs> and grace, no, no, I can't even no claim to uh, just well, stumble around into things and graceless well, I, uh, in movement and body well, well, and graceless in speech. <laughs> My uh, one of the things that, that I, I, uh, I tell people, I, I have revised some of my statements over the years that um, I used to say that, um, you know, we're, we're always bad before we're good. And then I, I watched a, uh, a documentary on Paul Gauguin and I saw the first painting that he did and it was amazing. Uh, and they said, we have no idea. He never served an apprenticeship. So now now I say uh, most of us are very bad before we're good. But as a tie-in, I, I say, you know, we generally get better when uh, we work at things. But in in my youth, I spent a solid year trying to become a good basketball player, and I think I was worse after a year <laughs> than I was when I started. And I uh, I am the, the the worst basketball player in in my family, so uh, it's not something that, that I play a lot with the kids. So. Uh, you and I are on the same page, Robert. So, so the dude that says that if you practice for something for at least ten thousand hours, you will become an expert in it is full of crap, because yeah, yeah, I, no, no. I thought that I, same I, thing. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think you have to have some inkling of talent, uh, you know. And and again, if you if you love playing basketball, you know, be bad at it. You know, if it, I'm a I'm not a very good chess player, but but I enjoy it. Uh, but. <laughs> You know, I, I almost never win. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> well, one th- one thing you win. one thing you win in is the movement of words. Um, Mike thank James, you. thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, Red Hawk Publications is very proud to have published Portable Light, new and selected poems. But we're here today to talk about his new one, Back Alley Saints at the Tiki Bar, brand new poems. Uh, from uh, Mr. James, the Poet Laureate of Murfreesboro, Tennessee, now, which we're very proud to say congratulations on that. Uh, Tim, do you have anything else that you'd like to cover, go over? I don't think so. Mention? We're getting close to the end. Mike, you got anything else you want to tell the, the folks out there? You got any readings lined up or anything like that? Um, I actually, the, there's two. Uh, I've got a, uh, a book launch in Pittsburgh, uh, Pennsylvania, the middle of next month. Wow. Um, the, uh, the, the wonderful poet and a very dear friend of mine, Michael Worcester, uh, had uh, wanted to organize that. So I'm driving up to Pittsburgh that weekend with my oldest child who's driving me up there. So we're, we're looking forward to that. Uh, I lived in Pittsburgh for seven years, so it'll be a, a really nice homecoming. And I am... Uh, teaching a class at the Southern Literary Festival at uh, uh, Middle Tennessee State University the uh, second half of April, uh, and I'll be uh, signing some books there uh, afterwards. So uh, I don't have the opportunity to, to uh, teach very much. I don't have an opportunity to, to uh, talk to a lot of college students, So, but I'm always thrilled when, when I do. So I'm really looking forward to, to both of those events next month, one seeing some old friends and and one making some new ones. Oh, that's, so, uh, that's looking fantastic. forward to all that. That's fantastic. I'd love to hear that you got a full plate full of stuff. And please, all you people out there in podcast land, keep an eye on our Facebook page at Red Hawk uh, Publications, uh, where we will post as many of these uh, occurrences as Mike sends us. We will pass those on to you where you can find him, see him, meet him in person. Also, remember, his books are on sale at RedHawkPublications.com. Again, thanks uh, to Richard Eller, who's running the board here. Uh, thanks to Tim Peeler. And thanks to Mike James for Good to see you, Mike. beaming yourself yep. all the way yep. from Murfreesboro, Tennessee. 
Uh, uh, good, good to see you guys. Good to be here. Thank you for, for uh, giving me a few minutes and for the great questions. And uh, you guys have a great rest of your day. You too. I just need for you to sign off by saying Red Pub Pod. Red Pub Pod. There you go. Peeler, you got a Red Pub Pod in you? Red Pub Pub. There you <laughs> go. Thank you all out there for listening to us. We appreciate it very much. Please look for Red Pub Pod podcast all over the places you get your podcasts, and we will continue doing them as long as you want to listen to them. Thanks a lot, everybody, and we will see you on the other side. This is Red Pub Pod. Red Pub Pod. Red Pub Pod. A podcast. From Red Hot Publications. Rip up pop. Rip up pop.